Mayum Buntag. Good morning, guys. Today is construction day 51. Construction day 51. Uh, a lot going on today. Uh, it seems like they got a lot done on the pool here just uh, in a few hours. Uh, so they're starting to run the uh, piping. Um, so I, I want to, I definitely want to show that to you guys today. Um, we did the uh, NMAX uh, yesterday, so we're going to do our truck today. I'm going to show it to everybody. Uh, you know, you guys have been asking for it, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, and I'm happy to say we have another house to showcase. So uh, if you guys are uh, working on a renovation here in the Philippines or you're building your own home, um, you want to send photos, uh, send them to buildingthephilippines at gmail.com. Um, and we will certainly uh, work on getting that showcase for you on a channel. So today, uh, I've been talking to Mark and Cecilia. Uh, they're originally from Alabama, um, and uh, they uh, bought uh, a home in Cebu. And uh, they did a beautiful renovation. So uh, take a look at the photos. So what would you guys think? Uh, comment below. Uh, Wilma and I think it's a beautiful renovation. Uh, I also saw some photos of the inside. Uh, some real nice work, some great cabinetry uh, in the kitchen. Um, so uh, the stonework uh, entering into the house is beautiful. Uh, really like that uh, as you enter into the home. Uh, your driveway, wow. Uh, really nice looking driveway leading in with all those uh, trees and plants uh, along the side as you drive into your house. So uh, Mark and Cecilia, uh, great job. Uh, it looked really nice. I, I, I like it a lot. And uh, also Mark said that he's going to be visiting Dumaguete in October. Uh, so hopefully we can uh, meet up and you can take a look at our building site. So nice job. Uh, so see you guys up at the uh, work site. All right, guys, you asked for it. So uh, we did the uh, NMAX yesterday. So we'll do uh, a quick review of our of our truck here in the Philippines. Um, I got a rag over the uh, license plate. But uh, this is uh, a 2021 uh, Mitsubishi uh, Strata. Uh, they also call it a Triton. I think in other countries uh, the model is Triton. So Strata and uh, Triton is uh, interchangeable. But uh, this is a real nice vehicle. We, we like it a lot. Uh, this was our second uh, big purchase. Uh, we also bought this uh, in Leyte uh, last year. Uh, we bought it in November right when the 22 models came out. So we got a real good deal with this. Um, and uh, we paid uh, 1,150,000 pesos. That did not count insurance. That was about 50,000 for the insurance. Uh, so in today's money, that's like uh, 22,500. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Uh, this is uh, a 2.4 liter turbo diesel. Um, and uh, I'm very surprised uh, how much power it has. Um, I had pickup trucks uh, all my life in, uh, in New York. And uh, the last few years, I had a Toyota Tacoma, and that was a six-cylinder, I think, 3.5 liter. And then before that, I had a Tundra, uh, and that was a V8. Uh, I think I had the small V8, 4.7 liter. But this is a, a 2.4 liter, and uh, this, has, this has more power than those two trucks for sure. Um, this has a, a lot of get up and go, and I guess it's because of the turbo. Um, but we did do a few things to it. Uh, we did put the front bumper on it. Um, so that was uh, put in Leyte. You can see they got the Triton emblem on it. So that was made by a, a local guy, and then I just bolted right in. Um, we did the, the flares on the side. Uh, just tried to keep the fenders uh, safe. Put the little uh, Triton emblem in the front on the uh, hood. We had the uh, windows tinted. Uh, so you can see the tent. Uh, hopefully that will show in the sun here. Uh, the top, I think, uh, 12 inches is uh, tinted. Um, we did the uh, rain gutters here on the side. Got them on uh, Shoppy. See the real dark tent on the windows here on the side. Uh, there was two types of uh, window tent uh, at Mitsubishi. It was the real dark and then, uh, you know, a little bit lighter. So we chose a little bit lighter in the front and then in the back. And then on the sides, we went with the dark tent. Uh, came with the running boards and then uh, we did put the uh, roll bar on as an accessory 
So uh, we really like it. So you can see the tint here, you can actually uh, see through, or at least you can, you know, here live, not showing the camera. But uh, yeah, we really like it. We also put uh, this back bumper on, you know, just trying to keep it safe. You know, if a trike or, uh, you know, small vehicle run into you, you know, you would think that the two bumpers in the front uh, and the back would, you know, help uh, with damage of the, uh, of the vehicle. But uh, let me go ahead and uh, show you the interior. All right, so here's the uh, interior. Um, it does have uh, navigation. Um, it also has FM radio, um, Bluetooth to the speakers. So we do Spotify uh, for listening to music. Um, so it's uh, you know pretty much normal features. Um, it does has a push button start, um, then power door locks. And uh, when you uh, lock the vehicle, the uh, mirrors on both sides uh, turn in. Um, we did buy uh, these, uh, they're like a WeatherTech mats uh, for the front and back, uh, thick rubber. Um, so uh, keeps the dirt off the uh, carpet. So we did invest in that. Um, you can see here the tent and without tent. So that helps a lot in the sun. And then uh, you can see how dark the tin is uh, on the outside. You can't see through at all, but you can see you can see through this tent from, from the inside pretty easy. So it is automatic. Uh, we did put a, a camera system in, so it videos uh, the front and back uh, while you're driving. And then it has a shock uh, on it as well. Someone bumps into your car when the car is turned off. It'll uh, video what's happening in the front and the back. So we thought that was uh, a good thing to have. Plus, if we get in an accident, uh, we'll have video uh, front and back. So I'll show you the back real quick. Plenty of room. Uh, same uh, WeatherTech type mats that goes across the back. You know, plenty of room for, uh, for anybody to come along for the ride. So we, we like it a lot. I'll uh, show you guys the uh, engine. So one of the things I wanted to show you before I start the engine is uh, the push button start on the Mitsubishi is on the left side. Uh, typically, I've always seen a push button start on the right side of the steering wheel. So, uh, you know, I thought that was a, a different design. So I'm uh, trying to figure out why they did that. And it, I guess it kind of makes sense. So, uh, you know, if you don't have remote start, this vehicle does not have remote start. Uh, you know, it's always, uh, you know, 100 degrees outside, so it's uh, 130 degrees inside. So uh, if you wanted to start the vehicle, you just put your foot on the brake and just push the button. And uh, you don't have to reach over uh, to start. So I find myself uh, doing this a few minutes uh, before we're going to take off as I just reach in and start the vehicle. Uh, so I thought that was uh, probably what the uh, engineers was thinking about. Uh, comment below uh, reason why you think it's on the uh, left hand side So you can uh, definitely hear the the diesel engine you can see that the engine compartments a little dirty So I got to take care of that but uh, 2.4 uh, liter clean diesel and uh, it, it really runs good guys uh, I'm glad with the uh, purchase um, They call it a uh, clean diesel and I think here in the back of the vehicle, it shows it. It's a MyVac clean diesel. And uh, it doesn't smoke at all. Um, even uh, I've been behind it when Wilma's driving it in the scooter, you know, and she'll uh, step on it and you don't even see black smoke come out of it. So, uh, you know, I guess that's the uh, clean diesel at its best. But uh, so there you have it. Uh, 2021. Mitsubishi uh, Strata. So pull progress. Um, they really did a lot here in uh, about a half a day. So uh, what you're looking at here is the finished height of the uh, pool on three sides. And it looks like they have the two skimmers uh, in place as well. So they still need to work on that uh, final and uh, fourth wall. But this is the uh, finished height. So uh, to show you the skimmers here. Now, 
as you guys know, the coping of the pool will come up to the top of this skimmer. And then there'll be a, a plastic cap that goes on top of the uh, skimmer. So they'll build this up here with cement. And then the uh, tile that uh, we picked out, that is, uh, I believe it's 30 centimeters by 60 centimeters. So it's very wide. Um, will basically be where my hand is. So, you know, they'll still be building this up with concrete uh, up to this level. And then the coping uh, tile will be right on top. So the finished height is going to be right about, right about here. So I guess that's about four inches, maybe three and a half, four inches. Um, but uh, you can see how they use hollow block to uh, build out for the uh, skimmer. And then uh, they have the piping uh, starting to be uh, laid in. So this is uh, skimmer two. You can start seeing some of the uh, water lines going in place. Uh, that's going to go to the fence line, turn left, and go to the pergola where the pump will be. Um, I'll hop up here. You can see more lines being put in. Uh, these two smaller lines is for the uh, water feature. So this is going to be that uh, granite top with the mini fridge with a couple of chairs. And then there's going to be uh, two fountains that'll uh, spray out into the uh, pool. So that's uh, the two uh, lines for the water feature. This is the main line that goes in the bottom of the pool. So you can see they're starting to uh, epoxy the joints. And then coming around the back side, which is the uh, ocean side, you can see the jets. They're putting in the uh, lines for the jets. Uh, that's going to go back to the pump. So uh, they did all this in just uh, a couple hours at the end of the day yesterday um, and this morning. So they're moving pretty quick. So now uh, if you step back, you can uh, start to see the shape of the pool and the, uh, and the depth. So a couple more inches of cement on top, and then that'll be the uh, coping height. So, progress. So quickly I wanna show you guys, this is the uh, mock-up of the skimmer. This is the placement of the skimmer. Uh, so uh, the joints, the two inch lines here are all uh, glued in. So all the fittings and it's all glued. And then once the glue sets, they come back and do an epoxy on top of all the joints that was already glued. So uh, I wanted to share that with you guys. I don't know if other uh, pool contractors do that. Um, so these joints are all been already glued. Uh, but then they come back and you can see this pink is uh, an epoxy that they just basically put on top of the joints that was already glued. So it's got a double uh, protection. And he says he does that with every single joint uh, for the pool uh, just to, to verify or to guarantee or hopefully guarantee that uh, they will not leak. So I thought that was uh, a good best practice by the uh, contractor. So Felix and his crew are continuing with the uh, putting the rough uh, rust proofer and painting up here today. So they're still working on that. Uh, this yesterday, if you recall, uh, that third uh, truss for the uh, master side, uh, they got that painted. They were doing the rust proofing uh, late last night and then today they got it painted so it's drying. And then uh, he built another truss a shorter one here uh, and just talking to Felix that's going to go out uh, in the pergola so I know they're doing uh, concrete uh, beams around the perimeter but he's going to put uh, one of these uh, for just uh, additional strength in the center I believe so we'll see how that works out uh, but the uh, the main update is that I was told you know it's lunchtime now I was told that they are going to have this all boxed up today. Today's Tuesday. 
and uh, they're back on schedule uh, again subject to change um, with uh, pouring all of this uh, tomorrow 8 a.m. tomorrow on Wednesday so uh, they received more uh, plywood for forms uh, some more uh, cocoa lumber for uh, scaffolding and they're gonna wrap up uh, boxing this up and getting ready to uh, to pour so I'm back here in the uh, back of the pergola. I was just uh, standing uh, right over there through that window in the last uh, clip. So uh, they're going to have this uh, boxed up today. So here's the back cross beam. Here's that uh, second column that needs to be poured as well. And then uh, here's the last beam. Looks like they have it. Uh, the stirrups all in place now. Uh, they're starting to uh, go up. A few more courses eventually this will go all the way up and meet the beam and be closed off uh, so if they get this box in today it's lunchtime now uh, then it was a little bit more to box up in the front it does look like um, they are going to be able to pour tomorrow I, I guess that Thursday uh, but we'll see uh, they're telling me that uh, they're gonna be pouring this tomorrow so uh, we'll see what happens so quick electrical update. This is where the uh, main electrical panel will be. So uh, this uh, solid PVC line right here, this is the main line coming in from the pole. And remember, um, we're gonna do two electrical boxes. And the reason for that is um, I'm gonna put all the air cons, the four air cons on the smaller panel that'll be hooked to the main line. Then we're gonna jump from the small panel to the large panel that'll feed the rest of the house. And the reason for that is, you can see there alongside of that uh, main line, there's another conduit that comes down. And uh, what that's for is future solar. So now that we have the walls open, we're gonna run that conduit in preparation of having solar at some point. Now it's not in the budget now, but it would be wise to, to prep. So two panels, have the conduit uh, ready to go to run the uh, electric from the system uh, to the uh, secondary panel or the larger panel. And then the thought process would be we leave the four air cons hooked to the grid and then have the rest of the home, uh, which would be much less draw, uh, to the uh, solar system. So that's, that's the thought uh, because we're not going to have uh, four air cons uh, hooked to the solar. You'd have to have a lot of panels and uh, a lot of additional cost and batteries. So uh, are we doing solar now? No. Um, but we are going to start prepping, and that's what we're doing here, uh, getting ready for, uh, for the future. 